Gladys. How's it going? How are you on this rainy day in lockdown in New Zealand? Um, yeah, so tell me how you're feeling. I just got stuck on the Facebook thing when I was going to choose the settings that asked me how I felt. And I couldn't think, am I happy? Yeah, I'm happy. Am I relaxed? Yeah, I'm relaxed. You know, um, the whole range of emotions. So it's hard to put that if you can't really use more than one emotion. So I, I stuck with, I'm happy. I thought that was a bit of. How are you feeling? Please say hi today uh, to me. Uh, let's see who's here. Ah, Helen's here. Lucinda's back. I love your drawings of the cats yesterday, Lucinda. Gorgeous. All of the family did a great job. And Helen, I'm excited. Hopefully you've brought all your boys with you too. Jody's back. That's awesome. Fantastic. Keep on coming. Say hi, everybody, so I can see who's here. let alone how to go live on Facebook, you know. So to start with it, just like, whoa, this, is this a good idea as you're falling down? I don't know, I'm not sure. And so, of course, but when I started this project, um, let's draw this, can you find the last hashtag, with the idea that you guys will send me photos of your favorite animals and stuff, and then I would draw from those, so it's a bit of a collaboration. That was a cool idea, but then in reality, as soon as I put it out there, I freaked out because I was like, well, who's going to do that? No one's going to do that. Who's going to be the first person to support that? And, and, and so I did what most artists would do. I rang my family straight away. I was like, sisters, you've got to get on Instagram. You've got to get on Facebook. And you, please, you've got to upload an animal. I know you've got sheep. I know you've got a dog. Um, so can you please do this for me? And being good sisters, you know, they totally did that. And so the, um, the picture, I guess this ties into, you know, why I thought of this. The picture that we're going to use today is of my sister Anna's sheep, which is super cool. And um, she took that lovely photo for me. Um, so that's really cool. So Anna Noble, we're going to credit her for the photo. She did that for me. Okay, so this is me falling. And I'm probably still falling, to be honest. I might fall for some time yet. Um, because I'm learning about this um, being online thing, figuring out if I like it trying things, you know, working with what I have and all that sort of stuff, you know, figuring that out along the way. And then at some point, well actually I feel like maybe I've already hit rock bottom. At some point you hit sort of a roadblock, you know, a problem, um, and you're like, oh no, I think I should quit. Um, and so I remember just before the first session, I didn't sleep at all the night before because I was thinking, oh no one's going to watch this. You know, can I even draw? Am I an artist? You know, you catastrophize. So that's that point there where you're hitting rock bottom. Okay, and then because I'd already committed to it, I was like, well, you know, I have to keep going. And this is with any creative process. You're like, well, you know, 
I'm an artist, I have to keep going. And so then you start crawling and you start crawling up the other side of this U. Okay? And so I guess I've already started doing that. Um, and, and then you get uh, more and more proficient uh, and you get refocused on what it is that you're trying to do. Sometimes within the creative process things change too. So you have to be allowed, you have to allow the process to do its magic. And so you might start with an initial idea, but it, it might change and transform into something else, and that's okay, you know, you can be open to that, you know, and you can work with the good things that are happening in the project. So, you know, that's what you're doing up here. And then finally about here, I think, this is a cool area. This is my favorite area. This is the whole reason I make art. You get like, like a little um, moment of celebration or joy or ecstasy or like, man, that was cool, you know. And then, then you're at the top of the U again, and um, then the project is finished. And so what do you have to do? You have to start, you have to make a new piece of art. And you have to start a new project. Um, but the thing is, and I'm sure, I hope for you artists, there's a few artists watching today, hopefully, um, I hope you will agree, but tell me if you don't. The interesting thing, and sort of the bit where the knowledge is power, is that this is a repetitive process. So th this happens again, when I make my next piece of artwork or I do my next uh, uh, project or anything like that. And the fact that I know that it's going to sort of have this sort of rhythm to it um, makes me go, oh, you know, it's okay, this is how it is, you know? And so that's really cool. And so what it means is I'm sharing that with you because I know that there might be times in your drawing today where you're like, oh, no, this is hard or this looks, it's meant to um, look like a sheep and it looks like um, a puffer fish. And um, that's when we have to just kind of talk to ourselves nicely and say, you know, keep going, keep crawling, and then everything will get better. And so, um, yeah, that's my uh, thoughts for today. And we're going to try and apply that to the drawing that we did today. All right, so let's hit the, uh, what's it called? The place with the nice light. You're still here, people? That's so nice, nice. Why do I always go to the floor? I could show you my amazing studio. This would be nicer. I'll do that instead. All right, okay, so hopefully you've printed off um, the picture of the sheep. And if you haven't, it's not a problem because I have organized, organized. Because it's a really crappy day here in Clevedon, um, the good thing about it is there's nice lighting. Hey, Jack's here. Hi, Jackie, I hope you're gonna draw the sheep. Are you gonna draw the sheep? And Kate's back, well done. Pleased to see you. Um, Okay, so here we go. Here's the sheep. That looks pretty good, I think. Maybe, can we zoom out? No, I'll just move you around. Okay. Turn my computer on, too. Oh, yeah, we'd better put the sound off so I can't actually hear you. You're a natural. Hi, Holly. How are you? You're lovely. Thank you for popping in and drawing with me. Um, you, got, you artists are going to show me up, but... I have to have broad shoulders, and that's okay if you're better drawers than me. I never really said I'm like the world's best drawer. I'm just giving it a go, and hopefully you'll do that too. And Sarah Nicholson, if you can't find a pencil in our house, <laughs> then we've got some real issues. <laughs> you need to run around the house and find a pencil. I don't think I could have possibly taken all the pencils in the whole house. Okay, we're going to get started. Now, um, again, I'm not really a snob when it comes to pencils. You can use any pencil in the house. Um, some of you I've heard overnight don't even own pencils. And I think actually that's a really good investment going forward. Once we get our lockdown, you need to go and buy yourself box pencils. Okay, because it's just a good, good thing to have. All right. Um, but just use whatever you have. Hopefully you have printed this off, otherwise you're going to copy this. Um, and we've also got a piece of white paper, cool bananas, and um, we've got a pencil. All right, so this is the best state this piece of artwork is going to be in for a while, okay? It's a white um, piece of paper. It's full of potential. It's like a blank canvas. Everything is perfect because it's just an idea. In fact, I had a student once, I think, that said... Um, can my artwork just be the idea? And I think I said just off the cuff, uh, no, that would make you a theorist, not an artist. So now, unfortunately, we actually have to make the first mark. 
All right, now we're going to follow the same process that I talked about yesterday, but if you did, weren't here yesterday, I'll just recap. Um, we used um, a thing called, and this will be good for you, Jack, for teaching, um, a think aloud. So we often assume that people know what we're talking about, but people are not telepathic. So um, when we're teaching, um, it's kind of handy to actually talk out what it is that we're thinking. And so when I thought about how would I say how to draw, um, I just follow a simple process. Firstly, we're going to make the outlines. That's step one. Step two is um, putting in the details. All right. And step three is doing the shading. Okay. And so we're just going to follow that process. But we're also today going to apply this concept of the U as well, just to make it fun. Okay, so it's never looked so good. We're going to start now. Okay, so if we're going to look at the outline, just like we did last time, we're going to start by doing some shapes. Um, okay, so we'll start with this lamb's head, all right? And uh, actually, no, we won't. We'll start this this massive body. We're going to do the same thing as yesterday. We're just going to do exactly the same scale, so we don't have to really... Um, worry about doubling it or anything like that. We're just going to keep it simple. And I did choose this sheet because it's not hopefully too tricky, but we'll soon find out. Now I'm using my hand again and I'm looking at the piece of paper and I'm going to put some marks where the top and the bottom of my sheep is. And I'm looking and I see that there's about that much space at the um, top. So I see that that is right. And then I'm going to measure how fat he is. It's actually not a he, is it? It's a she. And then we're going to put that on the side there like that. Okay, there we go. And we're going to do just like we did yesterday. We're going to make an oval shape. Okay, there we are. Okay, we're going to do it quite lightly. Don't push too hard. Okay, um, and that is um, just so that we can change our minds later. All right, so that's good. Everyone has hopefully done that. Can you say, yeah, I've done it? It's it's hard to I still am getting the hang of the comments thing. Um, but please talk to me and tell me how you how you're going. So hopefully everyone has done that first oval. And um, then we're gonna do this head. Now interestingly, when kids draw heads, they always draw them straight on. Um, that's very natural. But you see that head is slightly on an angle. So we're going to make it slightly on an angle. Okay, and how we can do that is by saying that's the angle, so that's the angle of the head there. And also, these are the eyes, they're going to go through there. Now, we're going to do the top of the head, so we'll just look at the outside of the head shape. It's going to come down here. The ear is going to go out there like that. Okay, yep, cool. And now we'll go to the other ear. The ear is going to come out here like this come down and then uh, what else we're we gonna do we better do the outside of this thing now this is almost like a sort of quite um, squarish face you know I don't know why I'm doing a sheep I had to do a sheep for a commission for the um, Clevedon corner bar and I did a massive commission did like lots of paintings and the sheep was the thing that I found the most tricky that's interesting but here we are doing sheep Okay, so now we've got, that's actually looking okay. I think that's all right for now. This is going to be, that's my sheep's head. Okay, and that's the sheep's body. And now we're going to move on to the other sheep. Now, this is a very important one down here. And so, um, uh, if I give him too much room there, might make him a little bit broader down here. Okay, and so now we're going to put this little sheep's head in. So we're going to put... Um, do this outside shape it's kind of like a what's that called a triangle did you say that's a triangle sort of like a triangle we'll start with a triangle anyway and then we'll kind of make it a little bit more like the shape that it's meant to be and now we're going to put the ear in and the other ear in are you with me people you got to start again that's absolutely fine you can start again hopefully i'm going relatively slowly so um it's all good. You you probably have time to start again. Now, okay. Now I'm going to do the um. What's it called? The body of the sheep. I'm going to go around there like that, and then I'm going to look at where it is in relation to the edge of the page, and I'm going to put the body of the sheep in. There we are. 
Water, water. That's good. I still feel like I'm maybe falling if we're talking about the U because it doesn't necessarily look how I want it to look right now. But we've got to have faith that it'll all be okay in the end. So now we're going to do this little sheep here. And so we're going to um, just have a look, not of it as a sheep, but just looking at the shape of it. Okay, so then he's got a tail. So like yesterday, I'm saying just look at the page that you're drawing. Don't look at watch your drawing so much you spend more time looking at this than you do at this and you trust that your hands are going to go in the right place and the more you practice with the drawing the more likely it is that your hands will actually do what you want them to do so there we go that's that one done and then the next one is over here okay and he's going to be like like this going to be like this we can always change the shape because we're going quite lightly it's fine there's a little tail. And it's, it's almost hard to see what's going on here, but we'll rock with it. Because it's like a frantic little baby sheep trying to get some food. I don't know whether that foot belongs to the mum or belongs to the baby sheep. Shall we say lamb? I think it's the lamb's foot. And because the mum's feet are so back there, we can't really see it, but that's all right. Okay, how are we going? Cool. Okay, now, awesome. I think you can actually pause the video too if you um, are finding you need more time and stuff like that. Okay, so, um, okay, like we've done the outline, which is step one. Okay, now we've got to do the detail. All right, so um, this, is, this is okay. All right, um, we're going to keep going. Um, we need to, well, actually, before we do that, we probably need, well, we can, we can call this detail. We need to go back into this sheep and make sure that um, his body is kind of accurate before we do too much. See that? We've got to change the shape so it looks more like the shape of the sheep. So you guys do that too with me. Quite Big girl, isn't she? She's looking, she's, she, she can be quite a big form. That's nice. Okay, I think that's enough for now there. How are you going? Uh, <laughs> sheep do... <laughs> Holly's saying her sheep looks evil. Well, it's not even like, how does it look evil? Have you rushed ahead and done some more stuff than us? Yeah, that can happen, that can happen. Um, okay, so um, we're going to focus on now the eyes. Okay, we're going to start putting the details in. Okay, we're going to do the eyes. So we're going to look, it's right at the edge of the face. And the, the shape is kind of sort of flat down there, and then it's round oval like an almond, okay? And then we're going to do the same on the other side, and it's like, around like this, essentially like that, and then like that, maybe like that. Okay, cool. And um, so that you don't look too evil, we can put some um, pupils in there, okay? Because I don't want you freaking out, Holly. All right, and this one is kind of darker. There we are. Okay, now mine looks evil. <laughs> now, I did tell you that sheep can be a bit tricky, but you've got to have faith in my sheep in the corner of the cafe. I'm actually quite happy with them in the end, so these will come right. Okay, um, maybe this is us hitting the bottom of the U where we're thinking, are we ever going to make this look like a sheep? So we have to have, we can either quit, which we're not going to do, or we can keep going and, and we'll make it look like a sheep. Okay, and so the, I'm doing those nostrils and then I'm going to come down and then I'm going to do the mouthy part. All right, there we go. Cool. Okay, that'll be fine for now. Um, and we're just going to chisel him out a bit more here because he's got quite a wide jaw beautiful jawline she's got a beautiful jawline okay so i'm actually kind of happy with that this line here is quite important because it shows that shape all right yep and that's that's enough there we can put some details into the ear here all right and then on this ear where this is the skin the head part and then it goes around so we're just drawing all the lines that we can see there we are, that's enough there. We can draw these beautiful folds in the skin here. 
down here. And that's kind of, see how I'm making them roundish? Because that's making the form, okay? Real good. <laughs> yeah, some people look like goats. It's okay, these things take time. Okay, so this is already looking like a sheep to me. That one, we're going to leave that one now. I'm happy with that. We're going to remember things take time. You have to build it up. So we're going to just um, follow the process. Okay, and now we're going to come to this little sheep. And this little sheep has eyes um, kind of like this. All right. Make his eyes quite big. Yep. And they're quite dark. So we'll just make them dark there because we're here, there already. And then the nostril is there. And then his mouth there. And then his jawline. That's about right. It's in the right place. So we'll stick with that. Okay. Now what I like if we're talking about details, you can notice the, the odd things. There's a nice shadow that's going along this um, sheep. And I'm going to draw that in now in case I forget about it. It's kind of a nice little cross shape. And um, we want to include that. And there's a little bit of detail on the ear there. Okay. Um, and I think that's cool. Now, how's everyone else going? Yep, some, they're all looking like different animals. Don't worry, we're going to make it look like a sheep. I've got a little trick for you to help you make it look like a sheep. Now, that's, um, I think, enough on the sheep. You've put them all in place. It's a nice composition by my sister um, with these lovely animals. Um, okay, so here we go. We're also going to do the background. Okay, so if we look at the ear there and we look at this piece of wood, it comes straight up there. That's an important one because all the lines are going to recede backwards, aren't they? Because it's in like a little pen. Okay. And then we're going to think of, it's about as thick as my finger. So we're going to make it as thick as my finger. And that's the rail um, that's holding these other rails up. And then we're going to draw this top rail. And it looks like it's got a half round on it. And then we're going to put maybe a finger mark in there, but over. And we're going to do another one. All right. And then, oh, we've got one going through the um, ear. Cool. So do all those. And then all these lines are going ver uh, horizontal. Oh, so what's it called? Vertical. So we can put some vertical lines down through here too. We're not going to fuss too much about making that too perfect. We just want to get the feeling that it's indoors. All right. And then now uh, we're going to do these ones. Okay. So now I'm looking at the angle. Okay. And it's like there. I'm going to use another pencil for now. I'm going to put that line there. Yep. That might have been a bit, high, bit low. There and... There. Now, an interesting happen things happens as perspective. So when things are closer to us, they're a little bit bigger. And when they are further away, they look smaller. So that's happening there. So we're not going to go into perspective too much. We can just use what it actually literally looks like and um, copy it. And that's a good place to start without putting all the technical stuff on it. So we're making a little bit wider the top because we can see that top part of the rail. I'm going to put that a little bit wider. And then it's going to go smaller. Oh, looks good. I can't really see. I think there might be another rail there. So we'll just do all the top of it. Okay, and that's that. And then we can um, do this little bit of uh, wood here at the top, which is there. And we can do some vertical rails. Now just go through the rails that we've already done. Because we don't need to be fanatic -y. We can always um, rub out later. I can't see what's going on down there. I'll shade that later. How are you going? Don't think it looks like a... Well, it, it does look like a potato. Because this sheep does look like a potato. Um, but that's okay. Keep with it. Alright, has anyone else got any comments? Don't get fixated on what it looks like at this point. Okay? What I saw from your cats yesterday was super impressive. So, ha I have faith in you. And you guys can have faith in yourselves too. Okay, I'm going to rub out that line. Because I don't want that line on the head. And um, I think that is um, enough detail for now. What do we reckon? Um, today I think we'll start with shading because, or well, I'll do a bit of shading. We can always put more detail in later, but I want to start with the background because that's darker. Um, it's quite a dramatic um, 
interior here. We've got real dark in the back and then it's lighter on the front. So I think for this, it'll be easier for us to do um, the shading right now. Now I noticed that um, people didn't necessarily know or feel comfortable shading yesterday. So I'm gonna show you something that might help you. Okay, so when I was saying um, um, dark, that's as hard as you can push, okay? When I'm saying mid-tone, that's I'm loosening the pressure. It's a bit like this, okay? And when I'm saying light, I'm loosening the pressure again, okay? So it's really light. And when I'm um, shading, I often hold the brush, the pencil at the other end rather than this end where, where I want control. I actually want to have a loose grip so that I can um, sort of do nice tone, okay? Now, you don't have to do it in one go. You can build it up over time, you know? And the other thing is, if you want to practice something fun just at home, is you can go from dark to light and lighter, lighter to check, see that you've got control. Okay, and then we can go quite big areas if we want to. You see? All right, it's cool. All right, so do we feel a little bit, maybe grab another piece of paper and have a go at that just for a second? And tell me how you found um, doing shading. Can, can you tell me how it is? <laughs> That's funny. Okay. All right, so have we done some shading? Have you done some shading, people? Yep. Awesome. I think you might have. I can't see any comments there, but we're going to say that you have. It's not entirely live. There's a little bit of a delay here for me. So... You can tell me how your shading is going. <laughs> Listen, Dave, you've forgotten your glasses. Oh, no. Oh, no. You just have to do blind. Well, um, was, it, um, was it Monet that painted some of his best works, like, nearly completely blind? So you'll be fine. Okay, so now we're going to use the same um, sort of quite dark. We're going to do the dark first. Um, we're going to look at the dark shades here first, okay? So we're going to do the darkest tones. I've got my Black Beauty out, but you can just push real hard on anything that you have. And we're going to start by really shading up some dark, okay? We're going to go around here and we're going to come down here. I'm just cutting in so that I don't mess up my edge too much. And you guys can do the same. And then once we've got away from that edge, we can kind of make a bigger, broader stroke. Have a go, have fun. It's quite fun doing shading, big areas. You can be quite uh, spontaneous with it. So we're gonna try and make that quite dark. Cause it is dark, so we want it to look dark. Okay, that's great. And now I'm looking at, what have I got up here? Uh, this is the rail and underneath that is quite a big shadow. So I'm gonna make that big shadow there. I'm just looking at the picture and I'm just looking at the dark parts. See, I'm just going to do, I'm just doing the shadows. There we are, that's the shadows on there. Cool. Okay, and now um, what else have we got to do there? We're going to swap over to this other side and we're going to just do the real dark parts of this. So push pretty hard, like as hard as you can. Cool. And then this one over here. Cool. All right, and now um, down the bottom here is also pretty shaded up. Now I'm just looking at this. That actually goes, up, I've made a mistake here. This actually goes up a bit higher there. So, and I don't even know that I want to draw the feed basket, so I'm just not going to. Shading in where it is dark. Okay. 
Cool. How are we going with the shading? Good, good, good. Okay. Um, okay, so now um, we're going... So we've done the darkest tones in the background there now. And uh, there's also a bit around the sheep here. So, go like that. Okay. And um, now we can go back in... Oh, there's more here. See what I'm doing? Just like yesterday, I'm kind of scanning it like a computer. So I'm going around and saying, Oh, look, there's a dark bit there. I'm going to put that in. You know, there's another dark bit over here. I'm going to shade that in as well. Okay. And so I'm kind of quite methodical about it. Uh, this is actually a lot bigger than I did the shading. So we need to shade it in a bit bigger. And that's that's pretty good. And now we're going to do um, a mid-tone. So... Uh, interestingly, the grain of the wood will be going this way, so we can make a mid-tone. Oh, we probably need to rub this out on our railings using your rubber. Just have a little go with that. See what I'm doing? Just all the horizontal ones, I'm rubbing that out. And then now we're going to do a mid-tone rail, on the railing going that way, because the direction that we um, draw in is, is kind of important. So now we're going to go, so we're going to go horizontal for the horizontal ones, and you guessed it, we're going to go vertical strokes for the vertical ones to give a feeling that um, things are going up and down and across. So here we go, I'm going to go this way, and I'm going to go this way. kind of don't actually want too much detail in the background because I don't want it to be the focal point all right so we're just kind of giving people an idea of what's happening back there but because it's in the background whether you got your glasses or not listen to we can't necessarily see all that much detail in the background so if we have detail everywhere in the drawing then people won't know where to look whereas if we have not too much detail in the background then we can um, sort of tell our viewer where we want them to look now I'm going to go back in here and just put a few more details of lines, the darker lines that are in here, to, to show that those um, there are actually some lines that are a little bit darker that you can see. Uh, mm-hmm. All right, I'm going to do this one. Just join those up so it looks like it's all running. Okay, how are we going, everybody? I didn't know you were allowed to raise it. You're totally allowed an eraser. I sometimes, like, ban erasers from the classroom because there are some kids that they never, um, they just, you go, <laughs> they never end up making anything because they've just rubbed it out the whole time. But for us, because I trust you, Holly, you can totally use a riser. Um, and we might need it. All right, so that that's pretty much we've had a go at the background. We can go back in later and, and put in some more detail if we want to, but we've got a, a feeling for it, um, and I'm pretty happy with that. All right, I'm just going to put that, that top detail in. That is kind of important to me. I like that rail part, top part of the rail. Okay, okay, cool. Now I'm going to swap down. I don't want to use my Black Beauty anymore. I think that I'll be fine with my 3B. Okay, so I want a, um, one that's a little bit lighter. I'm going to, I've got a bit of smudging. You can see why I said let's do that big lot of um, shading first because I knew we might make a bit of mess and you probably have made some mess too. Like I've got probably some on my arm here. It's all right. Okay, now people were saying um, that theirs kind of looked um, like a goat and different animals. So let's try and make it look like a sheep. Okay, we're going to start by here and put some more details in here. We're going to um, see this line here? We're going to draw that line there. That's the shadow. We're going to come down here. We're going to draw the shadow in. This is the shadow mark on the sheep. And it looks like it comes around here. This might seem like you're thinking, why are we doing this? But it's all about making things look real. All right. Okay, now that goes up here like that. Um, and this, uh, what's going on here? This thing here comes around here like this kind of a chunky looking thing is that where her leg comes out don't know 
All right. Okay, so we've put in a little bit more detail on her. Um, and so um, now we can start to think, how are we going to talk about the fact that she's woolly? All right. I really dislike it when we end up having lines around the outside. So I'm going to rub that line out a little bit. And because um, we want to make it look like she's a bit woolly. So I'm even going to use sort of squirrely like ringlets. How about that? Got any other ideas? But I think that's fine. It's going to show um, her texture, you know. So this is me drawing details in. I'm drawing in these little ringlets because she's going to be woolly. Giving her texture so that she looks like a sheep. Now, just because it's shaded in there doesn't mean that she's not got this going on in there. She's basically got these woolly things all over her, hasn't she? Like little, they're not, they're not dags because she's a good looking sheep, but which is her coat. And now it's down here, it starts to look like it ch sort of changes direction and kind of goes down this way a bit. So I'm going to do some directional lines down there. And same with this, looks like. She, so I'm doing some squiggles. And there's his like little fine lines. And this one looks like she's got like, sort of like vertical lines almost. So I'm doing some gestural lines that make her look like that. All right, we're doing good. So we've got to give her some texture to make her look like a sheep. Otherwise, she's not going to look like a sheep. Okay, we're doing great. Okay, I'm doing some nice self-talk. How are you going? Are you keeping up? I think you're doing good. As long as you're still drawing, you're doing great. Okay. There we are. So she has got some texture on her now. We could put more and more texture on her, but I think this will be fine for now. And if we look really closely at her face, she's got these beautiful little fine lines. And here she's got lines going down her face. And here she's got a line this way. Okay. And she and this goes around here. She's got an eyebrow kind of thing, or eye, is it an eyelid? Eyebrow, eyelid. All these tiny little details. Remember what I said yesterday? They're actually the flaws in people and what make them beautiful. Same with this sheep. So we have to try and get all these um, wonderful details for her to show off her good looks. Okay, now. That's looking good. I'm just sort of refining her shape a little bit so we don't lose it. There we go. We can still see her face. Um, and now uh, what are we going to do? Maybe just bring that around here. Pull out her ear. I can't see her ear anymore. Okay, so that's good. She's got enough detail in there now. Okay, and um, we better put some fur, some wool on this little sheep here. I am actually looking at this. It might look like I'm just going around in circles. I am just going around in circles. But I'm also drawing the details of this sheep. She's got, he's got to have some wool somehow, eh? So we go around and around in circles. Little squiggles. Or little marks. You can change up your marks depending on where you are on the sheep and what it looks like. Cool. Does it have any wool on its face? I'm sure it does. So some cool hair. It's cool hair too. And its eye is over here, but you can't really see its eye, but you can see where it moans out, comes out a little bit. Here we go. So we can draw that in. And um, ear. There we are. Looking good. Can you tell me how to make my lambs better? Okay, well, talk to me and tell me what's wrong with your lambs. I, I can't see them from here, so you have to tell me how, how you think they're going. And then I can tell, tell you how you, I think you can improve them. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to put a little bit of wool on this lamb. 
this texture is really important um, in this drawing because you know we want to give that feeling of um, fluff you know but um, feel free if you've got some other ideas of how you're going to put that texture in there you can have a go at it and um, after this um, what people did was um, I put a picture on and then they loaded um, pictures that they had done too onto my Facebook page so look later on tonight and you can add it in the comment section so because I'd love to see what you're doing so that's really cool I want to try something new with this one and Kate you might like this idea so um, I want to put in some shading on this sheet like this just try something out it's always good to try new things just shading this whole sheet form and then um, I'm also then I'm just going to try using the rubber and just Kind of because I want it to make it look like it's wiggly because you know how he's wiggling because he's hungry so I want to make it look like it's wiggling so I've kind of rubbed him out yeah I quite like that you now rub out the background a bit so it gets it white of the page but it doesn't need to be um, really strong form where's his tail gone I like his tail make a bit more of a feature of that there we are. Okay, so that's that done. All right. It looks like a sheep floating. Oh, well, the sheep does look like it's floating because we actually haven't done the ground yet. Okay, we better put some little bits of um, hay on the ground so that it makes it look like it's not floating. So see these little um, stalky bits? Chuck some of those down all over the ground. What do we have here? We have a shadow on the ground, so we'll just shade that up a little bit. For this um, stalks, we can just kind of overlap them. We don't, again, have, like in the background, we don't need to have massive detail. We can, we can just say this is kind of like in the straw, in the, in the hay. All right. All right, that's good. And now... We're st my one is starting to lose a bit of its uh, form, so what I need to do now is come back in and, and do some more um, shading. But I'm feeling like literally um, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. I'm just actually looking at this here and I really like this little bit of light that's coming underneath the floor. That So I'm going to put, some sh put the shading in here and make a big deal out of that. Sometimes when you're drawing, you find really cool parts that you like, that you want to focus on, because we're looking so closely. There we are. Look at that. So just like motherhood. There you go, Lamb, Mrs. Lamb. There's light at the end of the tunnel. They'll grow up and be wonderful citizens. You'll be fine. Okay, so now what we need to do is um, um, just put a bit more shading into the, re into the whole thing. Uh, <laughs> and so that we um we can um just finish off the drawing but basically everything is there in the form so we've done firstly the outline we did the then the details and now we're going to back go back and do the rest of the shading okay so um i think oh which one shall i use maybe like a 4b this seems good to me right now so i'm going to use this one and so now again i'm going to start with the dark shading everything that is dark i'm going to shade in dark So at the same time, I'm kind of adding details as well. So I'm doing that ear first. I don't really like the way that it's kind of got a dark outline. So I'm going to um, try and man blend it in the background a little bit. So have it darker in the background so that we won't make such a big deal out of that. There we go. It's a little bit better and then so that's that ear done and then we're going to come over to this ear it's amazing how complex a sheep can be isn't it again it's darker in the background if i squint my eyes it's definitely darker in the background than it is in the uh, foreground so i'm going to go over with another layer of shading to push that back.
I'm not even fussed that, that the railing is going the other way now because we still get that um, feeling. There we are, it looks a bit better now. And same thing, if we want to see the fur outline of the fur, we need to um, shade the background out. Quite a dramatic drawing. I'm liking this all the shading because from what I saw of your cat drawings yesterday, they were absolutely awesome. Um, but um, you, you, I could see that some of you hadn't had a lot of practice just practicing shading and putting down the marks. See, I'm doing all different directions to try and build up that shading. And what it's doing is it's making the her more obvious. I think so, yep. That's so good. Are we still shading with me? Wicked. Okay, so there she is. Um, we're going to make her uh, her outline form a bit stronger. Here we are. She's starting to really come alive now. Okay, she's looking cool. And um, see, I can't actually tell, So, I, but I have met some sheeps in my time, so I am a little bit going to go on knowledge here. And I'm going to put her face, a um, bit of the, the direction of her hair going like that. And then it also kind of rounds and around here like this. So she doesn't just have um, no fur on her face because we do know that they do have fur and I can't see very much right there. So there we are. I'm happy with that. I'm going to now go and look at this dark part because oh, we've already done the eyes. But I feel like the, they are the window to her soul and they're quite dark. So let's make them a little bit darker. Wow, she looks great now. Say her, say so, her, say so herself. Okay. All right. Okay, and now these bits here are quite dark. And they're sort of surrounded by these grey things. She's got a bit of pink in there. But if I was seeing that as a tone, it would be kind of like a mid-tone. So we're going to kind of, because we don't have pink on the agenda today. So we're just going to use black, grey and white. So if you squint your eyes, like I was saying before, you'll be able to see um, which are dark. That's going to be the black, which is um, mid-tone, which is all through here. That's going to be kind of like light grey. And then the white can be the white of the page. Now I'm going to come back and put the shading in here. I'm doing the mid-tones now. So all these bits where I marked out that I was going to have some shadow, I'm totally going to have some shadow. This is again giving her some round form. Yep. She's kind of got these little bits on her. Mm-hmm. There she is. She's coming alive. We're literally um, bringing a sheep off the page. Okay, that's cool. I think that's pretty good. What are we thinking? Kate, I know that you're here, but how's everyone else going? They're good. That's good. Okay, cool. So we've done her. I think for now we're going to work on this little baby sheep, which is in the foreground. Okay, we've got to just look at the dark parts of this baby sheep, and its eyes, like its mother, are really black. So we're going to put that little bit more black in. We're going to put in this bit of the black here, and um, we're going to put a mid-tone shade on the lamb's belly to show that that is the bit of a shadow there. And uh, what else are we going to do? We can probably put a bit of shading on here. We need to put a bit of shading on the body so that the head sticks out from the body so that it sees it looks like it's in front. And that's lucky because there's a line down here that will help us. And that kind of goes up that way. 
and then this is also comes here like that right okay cool and then now we've got to do this needs to look like um, it is behind so we need to make it darker in here probably quite dark this lamb we could probably say you need to be quite dark little baby lamb so that we can see your brothers and sisters all right It's looking good so you have to have a lot of faith when you're drawing I'm not even really looking at how well it's truly going I'm just kind of keeping on drawing and having faith that everything will be okay in the end all right so we get a feeling that that might be a baby sheep but we don't really see very much of it we've got to draw the top lines of the head of the baby up the front here looks cute we've got to draw his ears so we can define it a little bit more and it seems to be dark on the ground under here because the shadow is here for that sheep's foot. Yep. Good, good, good. Okay. Now, I'm finding that, um, yep, I've completely lost the sheep, so I want to kind of bring it back a little bit. So I'll just do a few lines to say this is where that sheep is actually going to go, but I'm not going to put the whole form back in there because I'm making it like a little bit uh, like we can't really tell. So because it's moving. Mm-hmm. There's dark bit here. Yep, that's good. Now, um, <laughs> your fingers are blown up from the smudging. Okay, well, I used to have an art teacher and she said, anything that you can do with um, your fingers, you can do better with a pencil. So since that time, I've been kind of against smudging, but um, saying that um, it can be fun and you can make cool stuff with it so go ahead and do some smudging um i think lucinda your kids did some smudging was it yesterday on their cat and looked really really cool so who says you know you can't do smudging give it a go see what works for you all right i'm going to i think now use my rubber as a drawing tool and kind of oddly rub out a lot of the work that i've done in the background here um because I, w I don't want the hay and stuff to be too much of a big deal. But see how I'm using this? So all that smudging can be quite useful. We can use it to be like the um, hay. Did you get it? It's quite fun. Might even put a more in there and practice our shading. And then we can rub it out. It's a famous artwork where someone did a, a drawing and then... The other person rubbed it out. The artist in there. Was it was it de Kooning that did that? It's very fun. So the finished artwork was like a rubbed out artwork. Okay. Okay. What do we reckon, people? What time is it now? Oh, we've done so well. You're good, Holly? <laughs> That's good. Thanks for sticking in with me. Um, we're just going to maybe just have a look at this for a second because sometimes you do have to stop. And often, like I said before, you have a cup of tea and then you come back to it. But um, I'm just going to try and put in a f the odd little final line where I think it should be. In my opinion, the artwork is made... You know, I really like that part, so I'm going to get that back. An artwork is made in the last, you know, turn from an artwork to, I guess, a masterpiece, in my opinion, really in the last 3%, you know, the finishing details. And um, the, another trick is what you've got to find and learn through practice is when do you stop? Because you could just keep going forever, couldn't you? And then you just have a completely black page, which would be a bit of a disaster. So we don't want to have that today. But um, I think, I'm just going to put that line in there. I think 
that I have nearly done enough. What do you think, people? Tell me, how, how do you think my drawing looks? It looks okay. I'm seeing lots of like thumbs up, so that's a good sign. Okay, and I hope that your drawings um, have gone well for you today. Um, I don't know that sheep are my favorite things ever to draw, but you know, we get better through practice. So I haven't even decided what we're going to draw um, tomorrow. Um, I'll take a look tonight and um, because of all those photos you've submitted, they're all fantastic of animals. If you want to submit one in, um, in the next hour or so, you could. It's, you just put the hashtag, um, let's draw this Katie Blundell artist. And then I'll choose one of those um, animals and we'll draw it tomorrow. So yeah, but I'm very open to your feedback because this is a bit of a test for me to try and do these things online. So um, feel free to send me a message or um, tell me how I'm going. Tell me things that I could improve to make, you know, this more fun or anything like that. So um, and definitely upload some photos. Um, I'll upload this. Um, and um, if you can upload um, some photos of your drawings from the sheep, I'm dying to see what it looks like. So, um, yeah, thanks very much, everybody. I'm going to say goodbye, but say bye to me, too. Thanks very much. How do I press the, uh, thanks Lucinda, thanks for coming. I'm actually thinking, how do I, I always forget, how do I end it? It's very complicated with all these buttons. Oh, hey Nikki, you don't know draw, but I'll be back tomorrow with a pencil. Oh, that'd be good, that'd be good. Thank you. Hey Greta again, and Chrissy, thanks for coming back. Uh, please, we're going to be really awesome drawers by the end of the week, if we keep practicing. <laughs>